Hey there, and welcome back to Trainwreck, an educational monster train series where you watch me struggle at around 200 pack shards. We're back at it again. You know, it's actually interesting. I'm way ahead on recording right now because randomly one night this week I decided to record a bunch of Monster Train for no apparent reason other than that I could and it sounded fun. So that's fantastic. That does mean that I don't have to record a million episodes today. I'm still going to try to probably stay a little bit ahead because it makes me feel a little more cozy. I can simply take a day off of recording here or there, but, but it's nice. I'm feeling good about that. So let's get past the few episodes I need to get past. Let's make some good monster train runs out of this. All right, what are we doing? I don't even have a clue. I think actually our last run was with the prince. As a, a matter of fact, it just happened to be the most recent thing I recorded. So we had a Brawler 2 Wrathful run prince run. He started as Wrathful, which is good for the early game. And then I pivoted to Brawler. It's actually better than it sounds. The reason why it works out so well is a Brawler 1, Wrathful 1 line bodies a number of combats in the early game, right? You get a little bit of rage generation, you can pop things. He can actually sustain himself pretty decently on bottom floor. It's good for um, party boys. I don't actually know what they're called offhand. They're the guys that raise the roof constantly. I know the uh, I know Pyrolite Master is the boss, but... You know, they're the normal versions of Pyrolite Master. He's really good against that. He's really good against Absolvers as well. He pops those first couple waves pretty effectively if you have any sort of damage support on the initial enemies. You have to be careful, of course, with Sap applying from those Absolvers. That can be a real problem, but uh, otherwise, not too bad. And then I think conduits are also pretty easy as long again as long as you can deal with the tank in front right then he kind of cleans house for a while so it's nice he did a great job the main core of the run however was a strange endless egg run that did pan out in the end but was a little bit slower than i would have liked we had the hardened hull opener saw a rail hammer pretty early which was nice as well we had kinhost carapace infused into an endless and quick a kinhost vessel this is a cool one because normally you can't get away with that right you can't get away with the no stats on your friend but there's two things that work out in your favor here one you have hardened hull so the egg has armor and two you're not bog chrysalis so your hatched units have 30 life right it's like 10 health and 20 armor or whatever it is so it actually has some bulk to it which is something that bog flies don't in that exact same universe you pretty much have to do endless plus 25 bog fly egg there's no other way multi-strike is way too gambly you need to have you pretty much cannot allow anything to hit your eggs or they die right and specifically your bog flies once they hatch so you have to have like an intrinsic tiresome climb or something it can work. It totally can work. Or, you know, play middle. But there's a lot of options there. Regardless, we didn't have to deal with that. We had quick, which made it real nice. We also ended up eventually with a bog slime plus carving Karuska that allowed us to really hatch eggs quickly. Dark deal, which was really important. Prince ended up playing an important part of the run as a result. And that divinity was ridiculous, right? Go watch that episode's Divinity if you skipped it. I know it's it's common to be like, ah, you know, a lot of people, they drift off. They don't really watch the end of the run. Most people get through maybe like, I want to say half of it pretty typically. The common interesting thing about my metrics is that most folks make it about 30 to 40 minutes into an episode. And that's pretty good, honestly. That's actually fantastic when you think about it. It means a lot of people are watching most of the runs. But it does mean that most folks are missing the divinity. I guess a lot of cases, I think people assume it's a foregone conclusion, right? They're like, oh, yeah, he figured it out. I, he, You can kind of watch me solve the challenging parts of the run. And then the rest of it, you know how it goes, right? I'm just playing it out. So if you're not into it just to listen to me ramble, you're maybe not going to get as much value out of those last combats. But sometimes some absolutely crazy things happen in those final combats, and this was definitely one of them. We had so many Primordiums show up out of blank pages, 
and I was feeding them buffs and then they were feeding my egg and it went completely mad with power. It was unnecessary, but hilarious. We had, what was it, three? It was maybe four Primordiums show up. I was just, I was blown away. The RNG behind that is crazy. It was really cool. Anyway, uh, I mean, I truly, I pretty much have to put like Primordium in that thumbnail. We'll see if I remember, or in the past, if I remembered, but regardless. Now we're moving on to Sentient. Sendian's not great. You know, she suffers because she does. she's not offensive in any fashion. This is something that, you know, notionally, I think it's an interesting idea, a very defensive champion. But early game, you are heavily relying on your champion to carry your run. So having no defense, or rather no offense, is a real whiff. You can't get by on just your train stewards doing five damage. You need something. That could be a razor sharp edge, to make the train steward not do five damage or a few other things, but it's tough. I find that train wreck episodes with sentient are very risky because those early games are terrifying, especially if it's a train wreck where you have to take a lot of the early game shards in order to even hit 200. So a very interesting challenge, always faced with one when I see sentient, but we will do our best. And that's all I've got, so as always, do like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's see what the heck Sentient's got for us today. I'm sure it won't be too bad, right? It'll be straightforward. What could possibly go wrong? I say, as something goes wrong. Hey, look, we have a razor sharp edge. Exactly, the game is easy. Just hit. It's fine, alright? It's actually a pretty good clan combo for us. Kind oh, never mind. I didn't notice it was Umbra, actually. I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay, well, hope you're all doing well today. We'll see. I mean, we have a good opener because we have Razor Sharp Edge, but we have a very big struggle fiesta of a champion plus clan combo. There's not a lot in this clan that actually, in this combo specifically, that buffs Awoken units. You're looking at like Morsel Maker's Infusion, and that's kind of it. Now, you can get through this because we have the Razor Sharp, something like trying to think of an example. Uh, a good example of a winning line here would be Razor Sharp Edge and a Double Animus of Will in the back with Morsel Maker Infusions, some kind of Disable the Divinity challenge so I don't have to, you know, suffer through whatever problems the Divinity happens to offer us. A good example would be like, trying to think of it, Iron Drop Cage Restoring Retreat. It's a bit hard to visualize, but it could happen. What else? What else? What else? What else? Not a lot, honestly. And then you have Cultivating Sentient in front, of course. Hopefully buffing the floor. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. So, as before I mentioned, we're Default Awoken XL Umbra. It's okay. It's okay. At least Plinks give us some reach to the back line in the early game. I'm fine with that. They're good 20 consumed targets. It's not great, but it's fine. We have Double Barrel Daedalus... Spell Shield fell, Patient Seraph. Patient Seraph being dicey, but we have tools in this clan to make it work. And Sendian's actually pretty good at tanking Patient if we have to. So we'll see. Razor Sharp Edge, Packed Morsels, Pyre Shards. Honestly, fantastic opener here, right? Low opportunity cost consumers here. Big fan of that. Razor Sharp Edge is fantastic. It'll help our early game and our late game. Packed Morsels opens us up to Morsel Floors, which is good. If we need to, right, that opens up, say, for instance, Alloyed Construct as an option. And Pyre Shards can give Cultivating Sentient just a little reach to backline if needed. It's not great, but it's better than nothing, especially in the early game. So, all right, let's look ahead. Temples today are on two, three, four... Okay, I was about to be scared. We actually do have them on seven and eight, however. So with five temples, we have a lot of flexibility that we can really leverage however we want to, which is fantastic. The dupe on eight is on the steel side. Vortex is not with it. That's okay. Makes both sides okay. Trinket shop with money on seven has a hoard. It's okay, right? There's no money on that floor in the middle, but it's still good having a little bit of cash with the trinket shop if we need it. No steel competes with a magic shop in cave. We have removal dupe cave on six. That's very strong, right? Because we could see an overstack and then dupe it, which is great. Competes with a steel shop that's pretty weak, but no magic. 
Magic and Steel on five. Magic has the Vortex is stronger. Steel does have a Horde and some money. It's pretty good. I mean, both these sides are fine here. Another removal dupe on four with an Umbra Banner this time. No shops at all on four, actually. Wow, that doesn't mean we get double doubles, right? Double doubles, double steel, double magic. It's unlikely for this to happen, but it can happen. And yeah, we get double banners early only, which is tough. Steel Shop having a Woken Banner on two. Magic Shop having a Woken Banner on three. No Umbra Banners early. It's not bad to avoid an Umbra Banner, but we need to remember... They're good defense and also good, well, not good, but acceptable offense in some cases, right? I don't want to rely on rare units, but something like a Shadow Siege Infusion or a Morsel Made Infusion can do a lot of work. Morsel Maker's Infusion is probably the best we're going to see here for scaling in general. And, yeah. We'll see what we get, alright? We'll see. Jackstrip's Boon of the Blacksmith. I'm going to be honest, Jackstrip's provides a ton more value here than other options. I'm a big fan of that in the early game. This deals with a lot of problems we could face. I'm going to click that. It provides more value than Boon of the Blacksmith for sure. We're taking the money. It doesn't matter what the champion is. Cultivating Explosive, we take Cultivating. This works out well, right? Jackstrip's kills back lines, and then we get Cultivating Sentient to hold down the fort. Mark of Invasion. It's free, question mark? Kind of. All of these enemies are going to pass away. Now, we're definitely playing the Sentient up top. I think the play is Plank first. And then we accept the fact that I am going to be buffing one of these morsels, unfortunately. I'm going to put a Razor Sharp in Sentient. Actually, just generally pretty good. Actually, the right play here is to drop the Antumbra Morsel in front to tank, and then we'll put the spikes here on middle, and we'll chill like this, right? This is pretty decent, I think. Jack Strips does a lot of heavy lifting. We get... I mean, honestly, at this point, we have created a Sentient Floor, where Sentient just kind of goes mad with power. I'm going to pop a bunch of Morsels, and then eventually I'll feed them to my floor, and it will be fine. So, cool. Sentient, I guess, will 1v1 this combat. Fantastic news. There's really no reason not to do this, in my opinion. So, she's just really strong, it turns out. We'll plink bottom, plink bottom again. Fantastic. More stats here. This is going to be actually pretty easy because we've created Demon Fiend, essentially. So, she easy wins this combat. Great work. Look at that. She's huge. Fantastic. Meanwhile, bottom guy has already gone through all of his life steal. He stands no chance, and we just absolutely crush here. Easy. Two damage taken. Yeah, she's pretty good when it has a bunch of morsels like this. And she scales in Relentless. It's not going to be functional later, but it's fine. I'm grabbing Vine Grasp, 100%. Two things this does. One, I can ping Sentient for self-cultivates. Two, it's a ping for enemies. Three, I already have the Razor Sharp Edge, so I don't feel like I need more. And four, Sharpen is bad. So, Vine Grasp it is. Hmm, Space Prism, Making of a Morsel, Ember Cash. Of these, it's going to be Space Prism, because an Intrinsic now means I skip a boss relic that I might otherwise consider. It's not great, though. Right? That doesn't power us up meaningfully. But it's something. We're going to go right. Yeah, I want to look at a unit. Give me an Intrinsic. Hey, they showed it to me. I mean, I'm going to take that, right? Take it when we can. That basically, that is a boss relic I was considering, so. I don't know about that plus 30, though. Endless plus 25. Too bad this clan combo does not have shark. I guess I'm going to take Husk Hermit of these because I think it's better than the Animus of Speed here. Sure. I'm going to re-roll this. They show me a multi-strike. We have an option. They don't. All right. I'm just going to chill then. Buy nothing else. It's a big bummer. It's a weak early game. Yeah, okay. Rough. We move on. I have a lot of late game temples, so I can be a little bit safe here, right? I don't have to go too hard. I'm taking this trial. We get we get supported a lot by what is it? The Jack Strips actually does a lot of heavy lifting for us here. 
yeah, Jack Strips is going to do a lot of good work for us. I do want Packed Morsels to be played. Let's see. Miner upstairs is good. I do plan on playing the Morsel. I'm going to Plink Middle. Okay, it's not what I wanted. Play that Train Steward out. That should be okay. The main thing I'm suffering with here is... All right, we got a Razor Sharp. Thank goodness for Razor Sharp Edge is pretty much all I can stay here. I'm going to pull forward and see if I can roll here on... Ah, bummer. It's a shame, but it's okay. All right, Packed Morsels, thank you. Buff again in the back. We actually do manage to kill a guy. Fantastic work. We're just going to drop a bunch of these Morsels down. It's good. Pyre Shards, good. I'll heal here. Fine. Most of this gets cleared out by, you guessed it, Jack Strips, doing a lot of heavy lifting. We just double heal, play out a train steward. Okay, sure. We will win this combat. Great job. Cool. It's not too bad at all. Now, Daedalus is going to look a lot worse, is the problem we'll face here. Glimmer. I should take Glimmer. I already missed the plus 30, but this opens up a good plus 30 going forward, which I appreciate. I will take Perils of Production. This is a good offensive scaler. I will take Morsel Maker because it's pretty much the only offensive scaling option we get. This might just be a bunk option, all we have. It's an acceptable infusion combo, right? Durable, gets stats. I have to find a bunch of multi-striker. This sucks, but... Uh, you know, just hit, right? Just hit. There he is. Multi-strike. All right, man. Cool. I'm going to re-roll here because we could see a quick, and that would be neat. You know what? Yeah, game shows it to us. Now, quick is annoying in a sense because it means I swing before enemies attack, cultivating sentient. So that's not ideal, maybe, but it can be okay. Now we get a, we do get a plus 30, so Glimmer is online. We're taking that. Second Intrinsic here is less impressive. It could be just a razor sharp edge, honestly, but I'll have to think about this quick for a hot moment, right? Because this is very strong in that it protects my floor against high damage things. Part of the problem is once this scales to a point where it's really threatening, we're going to be bothered by enemies... Or specifically Patient, right? Patient is going to be the one hitting and breaking the melee weakness. I think, as a result, we actually should go Damage Shield 3. I've convinced myself out of this. I would have done the quick here, except for Patient. I think we can overcome the lack of Cultivating really helping us out. Right? I mean, I think it works out. Because we have the Scaling, we have Razor Sharps, they exist, we have options. But Patient, once you get rolling, Patient becomes a real problem here. We can't be having Mr. 50 Damage Guy doubling it up and slamming Sentient to death. So, I'm going to take Damage Shield 3 here. It's, you know, to me, to be real, it's better than plus 25. I know I re-rolled, and you know, maybe that was a mistake, it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and... Get that infusion in now. It improves my draws, but most importantly, improves my unit for this combat in a meaningful way. Build a card, sure. Regen? Sure, I like regen. We could do like, what, regen, heal, plus 30 or something. We might not get the heal option, but I think it's better than the spikes or frostbite here. Regen buff? Regen heal is an option. We did see it. It's basically restore on steroids. So that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to go with buff. So that I can put this in the back and heal my guy a little bit though. That's cool. Card draw or money. At this point of the run it's money for sure. That's a really good card. It's a really good card in fact. This intrinsic is... Not terribly impressive, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it's that great. Yeah, all right. I think we've done enough here. We'll go ahead and move on. We're duping this thing eventually, right? So we'll have two of them on the floor. Sure. This seems acceptable. Now, we've managed to upgrade a dude, which is good. 
I was hoping for an overstack, but I, you know, beggars can't be choosers here. I'll plink because, great, yeah, I was going to say I'll plink because it saves me the Ember Drain, which is nice. So, fantastic. He gets that Resolve Trigger, doing some good work here. I'll play Pyre Shards, maybe? Sure. I am 100% playing the old magic. I'll drop some Restores here. I'll actually drop a Train Steward because it kills that guy on middle. Unfortunately, the Double Bomb is a pain, but we can overcome it. Yeah, big health. Just random stats here is good. I'm going to plink twice. Oh, we didn't hit any of the melee guys. One more time? Okay, good. This kills the foot soldier on the next turn, which I'm pretty pleased with. So that's nice. Great. All these guys are dead. I have no fear. I am just going to super heal upstairs because it puts the, the what's it called, the cultivate into a better floor i'm gonna tap now nah, i'm just gonna play out a train steward honestly it's fine all of them are dead anyway they all die to jack strips jack strips huge value old magic is good razor sharp good i'm gonna pop the damage shield downstairs and then i suppose we play the restores out we're doing all right. We have 70 damage in the back, a lot of damage scaling coming here, so that's great. Cool. This will mess with the cultivates, but I'm not terribly upset about it. It's fine. And we just plink a whole bunch. Sure. Seems okay. Yeah, seems okay. Alright, easy turn. Nothing exciting there. We easily win this combat. We're doing 200 damage. Not really concerned about it at all. Drop a big heal. I'm going to tank with this thing in front. Honestly, seems legit. We have enough damage boosters here that I think we're going to be okay. We can support magic shops really well now, which is something to keep in mind. Shroud Mitosis? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's it, honestly. So I I'm the only reason I would consider Shroud Mitosis here is uh if I were uh, going to go for the Nexus spike nonsense. So what else would there be? I mean the problem is Shroud Spike looks similar in terms of issues, right? I don't want to buff Sentient, and she is gonna be in front. Theoretically I could use Vine Grasp to move things around, but that's just unnecessary. Uh, I think, anyway. I I mean, Shroud Mitosis on the chance I see Nexus Spike is not terrible. It's unlikely to provide a lot of value, though. It's pretty much only on turns where I get the packed morsels, because remember, Plinks are not going to generate morsels after a certain point. I think we honestly just skip this. The draw here is not worth it. I may regret it later, but I think it'll be fine. We have plenty of good enough Nexus Spikes that I think will win the run. You could argue Forever Consumed, but I don't have First Hell Pact. It's not particularly ex like great or exciting right now. Rather just draw my buffs faster. True. True. Alright. Animus of Speed, Thorn Hollow, Crucible Warden. Nah. We're fine. Draw cards? Maybe. I could take Ember here. Because Cultivating Sentient gives me options. What's coming up? Spell Shield Fell? I'm gonna take Draw. I think it's fine. I don't have to take... What is it? Space, which is cool. I could go left. Dupe, remove some stuff. I could immediately dupe the Hermit. The only thing I've got to worry about now is just the question of do I find a better one later. I mean, maybe the Ring 6 is the better removal dupe for him. If I were going to dupe now, probably the best pickup would just be another old magic. That's true. So, that's an option, I suppose. I think it's better to go this... Remember, we don't have a... There's no shops here, so it's not really that much in the way of options. We just kind of do the best we can. Removals are going to be better. I'll take Cultivating too. Sure, why not? We're going to look in the temple. Another plus 30. Honestly, Tenon Piercing. Suddenly this means I'm buffing Mr. Glimmer and I'm going to full send it on duping that Glimmer. 
Now this, this is the weapon of choice. Remember, we're not Shattered Shell. I don't actually care if the enemies walk up. So I think it's great to kill them early, and this Glimmer is how we do it. This also helps us out on Shards, which means I won't have to worry about things like these Train Stewards being self-infused, right? So we're okay. I don't have to think about that. And in Piercing, I'm going to put this in Vine Grasp. Or no, that's a plus 30. Do I want a plus 30 this Vine Grasp? I don't think I want these. These don't do anything for me. The self-ping, it stops being a viable self-ping if I do this. How important is this? I might as well take this. Well, I don't actually think it's that good. Yeah, I don't actually think it's that good. We're going to go ahead and move on. We have a lot of temples. We can always backload things. We'll go to removal dupes. If nothing else, I can freely make another glimmer. So... We should be fine. Alright, let's play top floor. Yeah. We're gonna we'll plink middle first. Sure. Main main goal of this. I realize it hurts. Oh no, my cultivate triggers, it's fine. I'm I'm over it, right? It's okay. It's okay. Now, unfortunately, the one turn I can't access the Collector here is the huge bummer. It's okay, we make money in other ways at least, which is nice, but... Dang. That's, it is what it is, I suppose. Ah, alright, it didn't work. No one is surprised by this. Okay. Alright, we lose the Collector. It's not doomed. Managed to clear top floor. Great work. Go team. Take a life steal here. I'll take a hit here. I do think we want to put one glimmer. It doesn't really matter. We sweep for 30 something here. I may as well just blast these floors, right? There's very little risk to any of this. So, sure. And I don't need to slay, right? There's no purpose to that. So, we should be okay. The main challenge is going to be just keeping the floor alive. I realize I'm stealing Cultivates, but again, I don't really care. The stats from the Morsels are arguably superior in this particular instance, so... And I'm getting enough stats from other sources as well. I'm gonna Blast. Okay, these guys live with one health, so I can do this and then plank the floor out. You know, sometimes it do be like that. It's pretty decent. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I put damage shield on it. It's fine. We're clearing the floor. I have no fear. So, all good. We'll just pull this person forward and chill. Yeah, the sweeper is doing a good enough job. So, glimmer here. It's fine. Play some regen. End that turn. Don't feed him any slays. We easy win this combat. It's over. All right. Cool, we get through ring four without too much issue. We'll have the dupe for ring six, which hopefully will have an overstack by then. We'll see. Click the Awoken's Rail Spike. That's a great pickup. Prism Retrieval's not bad here. We can fish out the second Hermit on some cases. If I draw it first, hit an Intrinsic on this. It's not bad. I potentially could take a third one of these... Husk Hermits to help with Patient, and that would make this even more consistent. It's Magic Shop, isn't it? 10 times out of 10? Sure is. Great work. Take the money, our removals. Again, I don't actually need Plinks for anything. I guess I can hold on to some for 20 consumes, but I don't need to. Minus one's here. This can be on Razor Sharp. If I see a holdover, by the way, the minus one is getting slammed into... The, what's it called? The Razor Sharp. Not the Razor Sharp, the Old Magic. I'm going to remove Consume, the Rail Spike. There's a good chance that I find something here that makes that pop off. Double Stack. Bummer. Double Stack Regen. An interesting option. Huh. Interesting. I could, for Patient, play three Husk Hermits on one floor and and sentient on another to bait and then you double stack the old magic i don't know that's weird i'm just gonna put a minus one in i'm gonna put it in the razor sharp i think 
I'm going to hold out on the old magic for a possibility of a minus two, right? Because that would open up minus two spell chain. Actually, if I see a minus two, it goes on the rail spike. Let's just put a minus one in the old magic here. It's the most important card I have. All right, sure. Removals here. I'm going to hold on to the train stewards and drop two planks here, I think. I don't have to worry about planks. I might need this train stewards if I have particularly nasty things show up in the remaining temples. So... And they're, they're basically the same card right here, so it's fine. Ancient Hate. I have Piercing on the only cards that matter here, which are my Glimmers, so it's fine. Blow it up. All good. Doesn't quite matter. I will take the buff here. Play out a Train Steward. Oh, there you go. Good job, bud. Oh no, Train Steward passed away. Hey, we get the Collector. Fantastic work. I'm going to be glimmering bottom floor because that floor scares me a lot more. All right. Packed morsels here. I actually think the right choice right now is to simply face tank these attacks and chill. Seems good. Sure. I think it'll do it. Old magic is good. I mean, these buffs are doing a lot of heavy lifting for anyone keeping track, so... Solid. It's just really good, is the thing. You get bopped, but then you crush the floor. It's pretty decent. I can glimmer up top to save the health. Although, I could just simply play morsels. Yeah, it's gonna be... Tank with the damage shield. We'll put a damage buddy in the back. We get some healing generally. We nuke middle. It's chilling. Sure. Should be okay. Lifesteal morsel. Let's go ahead and stealth cultivate then lifesteal morsel here. And we're chilling, I think. Okay. Good. Two of these die immediately. Fantastic work. Old magic doing a lot of heavy lifting. Razor sharp. I will glimmer that boss, I think. Worth it. We healed a full here, which is nice. We've got a lot of damage shield in the back, so we should be okay, right? Draw cards. We don't hit anything good. It's fine. I was doing that because there's always a chance you see something cool there. I didn't even look, but it doesn't matter. We had the W already. So, all right, we get through it. Good job. No damage taken. Get the collector. Get the trial. Great work. Channel song is basically prism dust or prism retrieval, but better. But I already have prism retrieval, which is the main reason why I would want it. So still, it's pretty nice. I could use this to delay somehow. I'm going to take it for the opportunity. There's a lot of things it could show me. Void binding. Where are my magic shops? None on ring six. We're going to the dupe anyway. Then we get ring seven, and then we get ring eight, but only if we don't dupe. Might be worth it. I'm going to take this void binding, I think. I could see value here. We're going to the right. I'm going to look at the horde first. Thorn fruit is fine. I'm actually going to take bloating fungus here, though, because the regen with the old magic could be very critical to surviving patient, I think. We're gonna look in the cave first. Wow, minor refraction. But wait, he's huge. He's huge. No, 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 it's better to jam three of these on this floor with no risk. Yeah, for sure. They go tiny mode, fantastic. And then I immediately dupe this guy, wonderful. Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to go ahead and cut the train stewards here because we won't need those. I've already figured it out. We're going to be duping this lad again now because he got tiny. There was always a question of if I was going to go to this final dupe. Not anymore. Not anymore. No questions asked. Let's see. 125, 50. I actually think... Should I have done the numbers on that, possibly? That might not be enough. Huh. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, the problem for future me. I might... Sh I 
probably think I shouldn't have removed those now that I'm looking at it. I think it actually would be important to... Yeah, I actually think I needed to not do that, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. We have time, okay? We have time. It's fine, all right? Stop worrying. It's okay. It's fine. Hmm. Yeah, it's totally fine. Okay. I'm gonna have to draft units now, which is a bit of a bummer. That is a mistake on my part. If bad, if true. But... I'm gonna put stats down. This is fine. And then we can heal up a bit here. Sure. Leave that one in. That's fine. I'm okay with this. We do enough damage to get past that unit. Good job. Razor sharp. Great work. Take the heals here. Play a plank upstairs. Why not? I'm going to burn the prison retrieval here. Sure. Should be okay. I think we beat Fell without issue. I could funnel regen into my units. I'm a little bit interested in whether or not I should do that. It's an interesting question. We're getting through the real challenging parts. The, the important thing is that the buff is in, is useful for actually, you know, the word I'm trying to find is for actually defeating the boss because it does more damage, right? It's true. I think we get through this, right? Only 24 by 2. I take the razor sharps in the back, I think. Regen up front. I think it's worthwhile for me to sentient heal here. Yeah, that's good. Let's put this regen in the front, actually. I think this actually has become more important, in my opinion. I could always drop this. Ooh, yeah. Hit the Void Binding up front. It's actually good because it's one damage shield, which it does matter in my opinion. Because we're seeing the perils coming up. Yeah, we're actually super fine as it turns out. So, ah, well, she doesn't make it, but that's okay. It's enough damage to win. So, great. Okay, cool. Forever Consumed Kindle Shroud Mitosis again. Kindle's not awful, I suppose. I could permafrost this and do a big rail spike, possibly. Do we just grab this? It's low opportunity cost. I think I will. There's an opportunity for it to be really strong here. Card draw is good. Now, a divine artifact. I don't think I need these to win. I'll take 25 gold. All right, we're going magic shop side here. Yes. I must take everything. Minus two into that rail spike is fantastic. Intrinsic into, where is it? The prism retrieval. Actually, the channel song is fantastic. Yep. I could get a tiny stone here. Or another plus 25 HP for my dupe. Pretty good, actually. Yeah. And cultivating three. You can see the issue here, right? I'm only going to have 190 shards unless I see two units here. I think removing those two... I did the math wrong in my head because I moved too quickly. Yeah, you can see the issue on that, right? You can see what happened. I'm going to permafrost the Kindle so I can line it up pretty well. Will 20 consume a plink? I think we're making good decisions for winning this run, but we are going to come up a little short, I think, on actually killing or hitting it 200 shards, right? I'm going to cut a plink here because I'm going to a steel shop. I'm going to then cut what? Probably just a restore. I don't think we need that many of these, honestly. Yeah, okay, fine. 
good. A plus 10, it's not bad to toss some extra health and stuff, so I'm gonna put that there into a restore. Yeah, so not having the ability to self-infuse the train stewards is a mistake. So that's that's a bummer. We might not hit 200. We'll come close. Hey, there's a reason I call this series high shards and not necessarily 200 shards. I love how you know what's great about Monster Train. It doesn't matter what you do. You're always it's the game is always going to ruin Channel Song, right? The statistical likelihood that I top deck my other guy here is low. All right. But it's like, you know what? What if we just did that to you anyway? Unreal. That's okay. It's fine, right? It's fine. Okay. I wish to plink middle. Hit the... Yeah, money. All right. We all love money. Fantastic. We're going to buff up a bit. Play that restore, I think. I'm going to drop a morsel. No, I don't want the morsel to steal this all. We'll just get the morsel shot here, I think. Yeah, that's fine. I want these cultivates going somewhere useful on this particular combat anyway. I'm gonna buff. I'm gonna go ahead. I am gonna do a big heal upstairs. I think it's worth it. Get some re regen in. It's fine. Sure. We should hit the rail spike soon. We do. Alright, good. Great, in fact. Let's kindle. Now, if I draw a 7, unfortunately, there's no real value to it. So let's go ahead and play a Glimmer here. Draw 6. Let's go ahead and play Pyre Shards and then draw 5. This will have to do. It's honestly a pretty good hit anyway. I'm not upset about this at all. Yeah, should be pretty decent. Cool, let him hit. It's fine. Great, we're getting a lot of cultivate value here. We'll self ping. I'm gonna blast here for the heal. Big HP. I, this is a good turn for actually playing out some of these morsels. It's fine. Good work. Okay. Razor sharp. Razor sharp. Regen. Draw four. All good. Ah, we love it when we hit the good stuff. Great work. We actually pull out a morsel. Fantastic. This is a good turn for it, too, because there's nothing that will make me want to play it otherwise. We'll get some health in there. Sure, sure. Seems okay. We'll glimmer next floor, burn this plink somewhere, and we're fine, I think. Yeah. Cool. I feel pretty decent about our position here. Yeah. Glimmer bottom floor, draw one. I mean, it's a it's a restore. There you go. Sure. Okay. Now, will we actually see enough units to win this run? We had 200 shards. Answer? Probably not. If I'm being honest with you, I kind of just don't think it's very likely. I think we should have not removed that, what's it called, those train stewards. That's it. That's it. We're doing plenty of damage here. We chill. All right. Okay, now just show me two banner units, right? I theoretically can get this by... Man, if I see one unit, it's also doable. We'll take the ensnare here. No units. All right, no units. We're going to 190, baby. Okay. All right, fantastic. I'm grabbing an Ember Cache because that can play nice with our Awoken Rail Spike. We go left. Yeah, you know what? It's okay. It is what it is. I'm going to go ahead and hit a minus two into this Kindle. This will be a pretty big turn. Purge here is in... Well, I don't know what I would... What do I want to purge here? It's an interesting question. Honestly, might be a... Probably the perils of production, if I'm being honest with you. It's not terrible. It's one of those things where it's like, if you make everything free, is it good enough? I don't know. You tell me. It's only 10 shards. This is 15. This is also 15. I would need to find a way to get a t much, m so many more. I think it's just going to be this 15 guy, right? 
It'll have to be, I think. Emblem of the Exiles is fantastic. We're taking it. I'm going to go ahead and re-roll here. Sinner Salve is not bad. Improved Firebox. I don't have the intrinsic on these plays, but boy, howdy, would that be pretty strong if we rolled it. I'm going to go ahead and purge. What is the worst card here? Probably Perils. Void Binding at least has emergency value against Patient. Perils is pretty low impact no matter what we do. It obviously can pay out with something like Kindle or Prism Retrieval, but it's pretty much always a gamble. Let's just go ahead and burn that then. All right, 190. Look, it's fine, okay? No one's actually upset about this. So we'll go ahead and... I guess I should spend my money somehow, right? Proved firebox? Sure, I'll buy it. What do I want to remove now? What do you cut from this position? We could improve our initial draws, which are fine, I suppose. None of these cards are bad, is the thing. I mean, like, okay, Pyro Shards is not great. We can improve initial draws, but I'm not sure if that's... The thing is, is there's, like, not much that's more or less valuable, huh? Like, Teeth of Gold, Sinner Sal, these are not real options. I think improving our initial draws, I suppose, are the best choices here. So I guess we'll play thing, we'll burn things out like Pyro Shards. And we'll burn things out like... I'm trying to think of the next worst card here. It could be a Packed Morsels, but I actually think those are reasonably decent. I think the Restores are pretty good, if I'm being honest with you, thanks to Bloating Fungus. So, that's true. What do you cut? Honestly, a Packed Morsels is fair game, I think. Maybe both of them, actually. It, the Void Binding is a good emergency pick. I should keep it. Is Packed Morsels better or worse than Plink? Honestly, I think so. It's worse. We're going to cut it. All right, sure. We seem okay. Fully upgraded floor. I think we win this combat. These combats coming up. All right, it's okay. Moving on. Nothing I can do. Don't remove your train stewards because you have to do stupid things like self-infusing them. General rules. Hey, look, we got value out of our thing. Fantastic news. Let's go ahead and... Man, Kindle, I could get 24 Ember if only I could spend it on something. That's okay. Managed to pull out a guy and give him a buff. That's a pretty solid pickup. I'm a fan of that. We could also just straight up put one of these Hermits in front and it's probably fine. But no sense doing it, right? It's okay. Now, we specifically avoided... What is it called? It's a lot of incoming damage. If I pop one of these, I think we improve the situation. I do need to play the other man, though, is the thing. He needs to be dropped in, so we are rallying him there. I'm going to go ahead and plink middle and then drop a morsel there. This is nice because it forces Patient to walk away a little bit. He has to go middle here, right? Yeah. It's a good pickup. Now, here, I will burn the Peril's middle, because that guy's dying anyway. Then I'm going to play this Kindle. Now, we have a lot of the stuff that we can work with here, which is great. I'm going to plink middle, bottom rather. We'll play out the Ember Cache. There's a serious argument for dropping this Void Binding here. It's not terrible. It's actually pretty good. We'll do it. Then I'm going to play 12, a 10 draw here, which is great. We get big heals. Sure, I actually generate Ember on this turn, which is pretty nuts. Right? I'm a fan of that. I will play Void Binding again. We'll Rail Spike. I mean, I just made all my Glimmers free too, which is kind of ridiculous. A full heal up top, which is great blast downstairs we have enough damage shield that i don't think patient actually punctures us anymore which is kind of nice yeah it's good we blast upstairs which swings this a big way right that's pretty cool 
play that rail spike. Do it again, I guess. Half these cards are free. And then we blow up bottom floor, I suppose. Keep it going. Sure. Seems good to me, honestly. I think we're in a pretty decent spot here, actually. Pop this thing upstairs, play the void binding again. We're at, yeah, we're actually super fine. Cool. I'm gonna, what? Lock something down middle, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Then we double glimmer the boss. Again, it doesn't matter with the damage shield present, so he's gonna come back, but we hit him with the glimmer here and we're chilling. And I think we're okay overall, right? Yeah, seems okay to me. Cool. All right, and then he'll get one last pop-off. We'll lose that melee weakness. All will be well, and all's pretty good. Yeah, great work. Sure. Doesn't really matter where I put this ensnare here. Yeah, so good stuff. All right, we get, the, we get the win on Patient. We managed to make it through without any issue, actually, which is fantastic. And... And now if I just ensnare downstairs, this man is dead, which is great. Big fan. Draw a thing. Again, the cool thing about this is all my stuff is free. So as long as I remember to play the damage shield, we're chilling, right? Yeah, great news. Yeah, boss does not stand a chance against me. I've got 14 regen in the middle if I really need it. And I don't think I will because they also all have their damage shield too. So... We're pretty much cruising. He doesn't act... That's shocking. He does not even push through right now. And we redrew the damage shield, which is fantastic. We have enough damage buffs that I do think we beat mini-bosses and stuff, so that's fair. We'll need to rely on, I think, the Glimmers and the Ensnare to make sure. I think... There are a couple variants of mini-bosses, the bulkier ones that are going to cause us some problems. So, now we could play a different floor, like middle. They're all small enough, right? They're all small enough to fit. Yeah, one, two, three, four, yeah, okay, we can play middle, and that actually does cultivate a lot better here. I think we're going to do that. One big glimmer middle is great. Yeah, this guarantees that the Cultivates come through in a meaningful way, which I think is important. I don't need to Glimmer here. I can Glimmer bottom here, which is great. Let's keep the buffs rolling here. Yes. I am not going to play the Void Binding yet. I want to try to make sure I'm able to get a big Rail Spike play. Okay, so here is the motions. I'm going to go ahead and self-ping here. Then I'm going to start stacking buffs. Time for... It's not going to be a glamorous Kindle, but it's good enough Kindle. I need to play out some of the other stuff in my hand, and now I draw nine, and we accept that. That hits both glimmers, which is actually huge. Go ahead and blast one there, one middle... Great work. Second ping. We're doing all right. We get a razor sharp. We lock down here. It doesn't matter. Ember cache is good. How do I feel about void binding spam now? Not yet. We're going to redraw that rail spike. I can get a big turn coming up. We got chains, which is pretty much optimal, I think. Pretty close to perfect. Draw four. Yeah. It's decent not what I was hoping for. Bad turn for this. I'm going to go ahead and hit the glimmer on the boss mini boss here. I think that's important. I'm going to self ping specifically for stats. I think I am going to heal. It makes sense to do it. Void binding for damage. It adds a little bit. We're not doing a lot. I think we ensnare the boss now and then just wait, right? We delay until I can get another turn of stats and stuff. 
Right, a big part of this that I think does matter is I get free glimmers into the boss here. And eventually we'll see more razor sharps, right? This is important. Do I commit the void binding now? No, I would like to rail spike one last time. Yeah. One more rail spike, and we get the ensnare here, so that's fantastic. We get to lock this man down. Old magic is good. Play out cards. These are good decisions. Let's get rid of this mid-floor guy. Draw three. Sure, we hit a restore. That feels productive. I'm going to self-ping again. We're killing him on next turn. I'm not afraid. Let's blast the glimmer on... I mean, at this point, we may as well Glimmer Middle, actually. Yeah, that seems reasonable. We do actually defeat him, which is pretty cool. Now, Slate is the real challenge here, absolutely. We always kind of knew it was. Let's hit him with the Glimmer, for sure. He gets all of those. Where's my Ensnare? It's coming up. I can lock him down again, which is good. Let's go ahead and draw three is the entire deck. Let's play the Vengeful Shard and draw two. It's fine. We will ensnare him here and then continue buffing. Currently doing around 600 damage. The main thing I want to lock him down here is because I'm getting an Ember Drain floor here, which is a real bummer. I'm going to hit that Glimmer on this floor. It's good. I'm going to self-ping. We will take this Vengeful Shard here and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's that one damage. It's okay. Could have been worse. Now he walks up. Okay, now the cool thing about this is he's actually unable to kill me. Just hitting him with one ensnare meant he he always he never actually gets to go to the, the top floor on me, right? Which is a huge important detail. Hit that rail spike, let's go. Alright, we made Vengeful Shard free. I, I will Glimmer bottom floor to get rid of those curse friends. Self-ping here, the rest of this doesn't matter too much. We actually do defeat him, which is shocking, but relevant. And then, I mean, we win the combat from this position, right? We got past the challenges of the day. Yeah. Cool, perfect, honestly. Hit that draw card, see what we roll into. Nothing too exciting. We get some money out of it, which is fine. And we're chilling. Great work. This would have been the exact same at 200 shards, so it doesn't really matter. Like, it changes literally nothing. So, it's like, ooh, plus one damage to the divinity and like 20 health to the mini bosses or something. It's fine. Our run is not that close. It would not have mattered. So, I'm not actually, I'm not actually that worried about it. I went a little too fast on the... Decision making is all it means. I didn't reach 200, but it's high shards. That's why we changed the name of the series to high shards. We'll go to the run summary. It's a very solid run. I mean, this is the kind of thing you're looking for, right? You're looking for Morsel Maker Infusion, something that hits twice at least. This could have been an Animus of Will, just straight up. The fact that it swept is fine and advantageous. Sure, I'm not mad about it. And big Kindle Awoken Rail Spike turn is nice, you know? The Kindle itself provides a good amount of value. We never saw a first Hell Pact, unfortunately, but fine. Channel Song did actually get used in a couple combats, and it was effective. We had enough units to pull from. Quad upgraded Husk Hermit is, you know what? I'll say it. It's nice. I like it. Now, the third guy obviously got duped a little early, but it's still fine. At least he was tiny. It's all I'll say. And don't sleep on this random Void Binding. This random Void Binding is the only reason we beat Patient. We basically just made everything free thanks to the rail spike, and then it didn't matter that I had Ember Drain, right? We just played everything anyway, so pretty good. And then a huge shout out to plus 30, plus 10 in Piercing Glimmer. This card just completely crushed. And of course, obviously, Emblem of the Exiles is good. We never ended up getting any real value out of the firebox, but... We did it this way because you never know, right? It could have just been, oh, we drew a Woken Rail Spike on turn one. Great job, right? So it's it's fine. Also, huge shout out to Jack Strips. I think this is an easily overlooked relic that does a lot of heavy lifting here. So pretty awesome, all things considered. And yeah, I think we've solved the challenging run. We solved the bad clan combo that doesn't have many options. We did our best. Morsel Maker, he did fine.
Husk Hermit, sure, why not? Cultivating Sentient, great. Being able to jam all this together on mid-floor on the Divinity was pretty huge. Let me be honest with you. It meant that these guys were never getting hit. So the health, the effective health on our floor walking into Relentless was massive. There was no way the Divinity was ever going to overcome it. I'm also glad that we were actually fast enough to do this. A big part of why that worked was the channel song. So, And then we also had, was it the Prism Retrieval, just in case we drew it on a good turn or we needed it in a backup situation or something. You know, it's nice having these like tutors. They're low opportunity cost, but potentially very high value. So uh, very useful. And and that's a run of Monster Train. I don't really have much else to add. So fantastic. I will let you go there. Incredible work. Go team. So, hey, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. Uh, as always, you can give the video a like if you want. You can subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next. Take care, folks.